Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Jenny Mack with your daily comedy news. Jimmy Kimmel hosted the ABC Upfronts and said two years ago I couldn't be here in person because I had COVID. Last year I couldn't be here because of the writer's strike. And this year I couldn't think of a third excuse. <laughs> Tom Brady has regrets about the roast. I don't think Tom Brady did enough research on how a roast goes. Brady was on the Pivot podcast and said, I loved when the jokes were about me. I thought they were so fun. I didn't like the way it affected my kids. So it's the hardest part about it. Like the bittersweet aspect of when you do something that you think is one way and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I wouldn't do that again because the way it affected actually the people I care about the most in the world. It makes you in some ways a better parent going through it because, again, sometimes you're naive. You don't know or you get a little like, oh, shoot. Bourbon entrepreneur Jim Gaffigan is getting into comedy. He will be the first of a new series of specials on Hulu's Laughing Now. A new comic on Hulu's Laughing Now will be featured each month. Twelve specials expected throughout a year. You see there's one every month, and in a normal year, there are 12 months. So that's how they arrived at 12. Jim Gaffigan's special, The Skinny, which thankfully doesn't have the word pale in the title for once, will uh, debut November 22nd. That, to me, feels like it's going to be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving or such. Let me look. Uh, no, that's going to be Friday is when that's going to be. Okay. So they're going to put these things out on Friday night. I'm not sure that's a good night. Netflix does theirs on Tuesday, which I find works really well. Uh, HBO, Saturday night at 10 p.m. because they think it's 1978. Uh, those aren't working for me at all. Amazon, does Amazon do Mondays? I'm not even sure. Anyway, Craig is the president of Disney Television Group. And in a statement, he said, with the launch of Hulu's Laughing Now, we're excited to round out Hulu's world-class comedy offering. Yeah. With a lineup of some of the funniest voices in stand-up comedy today, Hulu will also be launching a curated collective of licensed stand-up specials from 800-pound Gorilla and Comedy Dynamics. No word on who the other 11 comedians will be in year one. Conan O'Brien will get a second season of Conan O'Brien Must Go. Season two will come out someday and will be six episodes long. We waited quite a while for season one. And as amazing as Conan O'Brien Must Go is... Not sure this is what we were looking for, Conan. I thought we were getting like a variety show where you're going to be on HBO Max, Max, HBO Max, you know, more than like, you're, you're basically on slightly more than I am. Can we get a little more output, buddy? Bill Burr was on Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast. The topic, Louis C.K. Bill Maher said, I mean, don't get me started on that. Isn't it time everyone just went, okay, it wasn't a cool thing to do, but it's been long enough and welcome back. Enough, I mean for the Lord's sake. Clean that up a little. It's not the end of the world. People have done so much worse things and gotten less. There's no rhyme or reason to the Me Too type punishments. I'm sorry, is Louis C.K. canceled? He seems to be doing okay. He's selling specials. He's selling out Madison Square Garden. I'm on his website now. Let's see. I can buy his Madison Square Garden show for $5. If you're playing Madison Square Garden, you're not all that canceled. I'm sorry. He has a new special that we can apparently download and stream for $10. Oh, yeah, he was nominated for Best Comedy Album by the Grammys. He had that movie last year that we totally forgot about, 4th of July. Remember that? Let's not act like he's on an ice floe in the middle of the Arctic somewhere. Bill Burr said they took $50 million from him. I think they punished him. I am I would love to ask Burr about how he arrived at that number. Am I forgetting something? Like when you tell me Dave Chappelle walked away from $50 million, I understand that number because he had a deal with Comedy Central, which he walked away from. Uh, who's the they that took $50 million from CK? Bird talked about cancel culture in general and said, no one cares anymore. It started off with something everyone could agree on, then quickly it spun out of control. I remember when cancel culture got to the point where it was like, I don't like some of the topics in your stand-up act, right? That's when it got weird. Cancel culture, it's over. No one cares anymore. Bill Maher said, there's these actors who won't work with him anymore, and some of them made movies with him, saying, I regret doing that. What a bunch of wussies clean that up. First of all, it's a very improbable crime they're accusing him of. Plainly, the other party had motivation and was vindictive. What? On the MarySue.com, Rachel Leishman writes, Let me explain. CK was accused of sexual misconduct by multiple women and admitted to masturbating in front of female comedians without their consent. He went on to continue performing stand-up just a few months after the situation. Sure, he's not starring in an FX series anymore, but he's headlining comedy tours. Louis C.K., back in the day, put out a statement. The statement read, These stories are true. 
At the time, I said to myself that what I did was okay because I never showed a woman my penis without asking first, which is also true. What I learned later in life, too late, is that when you have power over another person, asking them to look at your penis isn't a question, it's a predicament for them. The power I had over these women is they admired me, and I wielded that power irresponsibly. Skipping ahead, I also took advantage of the fact that I was widely admired in my and their community, which disabled them from sharing their story and brought hardship to them when they tried because people who look up to me didn't want to hear it. The allegations against CK went public, and he learned nothing. He went back to doing stand-up, making fun of the situation, winning a Grammy for his comedy album while selling out Madison Square Garden. Nothing happened to him. Did he lose out on opportunities because he was a creep who was found out? Yes! People like Marr just really want the bad man of the world to get a slap on the wrist and be told, okay, don't do it again, wink, wink. My personal point here, let's not act like Louis canceled. He's winning Grammys and playing the garden. He's not canceled, I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Burr also spoke with Columbus Underground. Totally new topic here. The Columbus Underground asked Burr, have you ever been offered feedback about your work that actually been useful to you? So much of that stuff, like social media, you don't even know if it's going to be bots at this point. So I don't listen to any of that. I do listen to my comedic friends. I listen to my wife when she goes, hey, you know, I don't know if you should be saying that. You know, I'll get stubborn. I'll defend stuff. But then eventually I'll just be like, all right. I was telling a buddy of mine. I saw doing a joke and the punchline was just, what the F? Don't ever have a punchline in your act that's just, what the F? Everyone's laughing at it because they're all thinking, what the F? They want you to elaborate on what they're thinking because they can already think that by themselves. They don't need a professional what the F guy. For the most part, I use feedback from comics, a lot of it nonverbal. If they're hanging out to watch your set, so you know you're doing something right. If they're not hanging out anymore, maybe you should dig a little deeper. Columbus Underground said, I spoke to Brian Reagan a month or so ago. You both often get called comedians comedians. Do you agree with that? What does it mean? Burr said, well, what a comedian is, comedians that not only like what you do, but they really understand you. I've been quite uh, prolific this week. Prolific's a little strong. I've been writing a lot on the Substack. I don't know if any of it's prolific, but there's a lot of it. Prolific. Marked by abundant inventiveness or productivity. Hmm. Maybe. There's a lot of it anyway. I wrote more about Howard Stern. I was happy with the way the Howard one came out because I was trying not to bury modern Howard... I wanted to show my respect for younger Howard and explain my personal struggle with Howard 2024 versus Howard, say, 1984, and realized maybe it's just about me because at heart I'm 15 years old. So that's on the Substack link in the notes. It's free. If it hits you up for money, just go, no money for Johnny Mac, and just subscribe for free, please. Thank you. A new list, the top 50 podcasts in the United States that did not make it. So this is probably uh, the 51st most popular podcast in the United States, as far as I can tell. And I'll just go with that until somebody goes, no, you're not. From a comedy standpoint, number one, the Joe Rogan Experience, Smartless at number eight. Comedy adjacent, Club Shay Shay, Cat Williams says you're welcome. That's number 11. Theo Vaughn at number 12. Andrew Santino and Bobby Lee's Bad Friends, number 15. Mainstream America, not noticing that even exists. Same note on Theo Vaughn. Office Lady, still hanging around at number 22. Conan at 25. That seems low, doesn't it? Yeah. Two Bears, One Cave, Segura and Kreischer, 31. Falling out of the top 50, Mark Marin, probably since I'm 51. Marin's probably the 52nd most popular podcast. This one being slightly more popular than Mark Marin until somebody can prove otherwise. At the Sydney Comedy Festival, I couldn't find any audio to play for you today, so I'll just read a couple real quick. Tim Ling's show was called, Well, This is Awkward. How do you stop awkward situations from happening? Ting wishes she knows. She's been a plus one at a funeral, fought a Michael Jackson impersonator, and is constantly roasted by her mum about it. Weekend Notes said, Ting is dry like a good martini, one of the hottest up-and-coming comedians on the circuit. Tom Whitcomb's white-collar dark jokes, also no clip. This is a stand-up comedy hour packed full of razor-sharp jokes and devastating punchlines. From a comedian who doesn't believe in too soon or too far, for lovers of Jimmy Carr, Anthony Jessenek, or Frankie Boyle, come see the closest thing Australia has to offer. All right, I would be into that. See, Do, Eat gave it four stars. Confident, articulate, and very funny, a comedian on the rise. CNN is going to do a U.S. version of the BBC comedy quiz show, Have I Got News For You?, British version features two teams of panelists who answer questions about this week's news, cracking jokes, and sparking discussions in the process. The producers of the BBC version will also produce the U.S. edition. Well, that's good. No announcements on who might be on yet. Tracy Morgan, Knicks fan. He was on the TNT NBA show. Draymond Green was filling in for Charles Barkley, who had a night off. Tracy said, let me tell you something, Draymond. I love you like cooked food. I love you like the fat kid loves cake. But don't talk crap about my team. This is New York City, kid. 
This is the home of King Kong. This is where he died. This is how we get down. Don't talk crap about my team, Draymond. I love you. Peace. Um, New York City is not the home of King Kong. I believe Mr. Kong grew up on Skull Island, did he not? Uh, isn't that right? I mean, that's his home. He was kidnapped and brought to New York City and escaped and climbed the Empire State Building, and then you guys shot him. I don't think he considers that his home at all. Netflix has announced a golf comedy starring Will Ferrell, a scripted series comedy about golf, 10 episodes. It will co-star Rami Youssef. That's all weird. It is called GOLF, all caps. In GOLF, Will Ferrell plays a fictional golf legend. Details of Youssef's part are being kept under wraps. This completely different than the one where Owen Wilson plays a golf legend on Apple TV and Mark Marin is his old caddy or something. So we have dueling golf shows. That's your comedies for today. If you would like this and the other shows on the network, ad free. Open up the show on the Apple Podcast app where it says subscriptions. Click it and pay the four ninety nine a month, but not the first thirty days. That's a free trial, so you can test drive this thing and you can decide. Ah, oh, either I like it or I don't. Or Johnny Mac sleeps too late. I'm up at four thirty in the morning and I hate him. He doesn't upload the commercial free version until sometimes seven a.m. or seven forty five if he has to drop his daughter off at school, and I don't like that. I get it. Uh, what is it now in my world? It's one thirty three. At 2 p.m. Eastern, today in my world, yesterday in your world, I have a meeting to try and solve that. So uh, stay tuned. See you tomorrow.